welcome to the Pennine Dragway at York for round one of the Ultimate Street Bike Series. The York venue is undoubtedly one of the most popular, especially with the Northern Riders. This year, the Ultimate Street Bike Series is ACU approval and benefits from a sponsorship package negotiated with EBC Brakes, Metzler Tires, Toaster Tuning Shop, Pirelli Tires, Rapier Racing, Harris, Goodrich and the Motorcycle Association. What this early April venue gives many of us is our first chance to see what's been taking shape in those lock-up garages in those long winter evenings. Stretched, lowered, lightened and tuned in an attempt to knock another tenth of a second from those personal best times. And right from the start, Suzuki's were showing their popularity and potential. Craig Ashton, on his GSX-R 1100, was back where he left off last year, straight into low tens with what looks like a stock R. Also on an 1100R, Gary Kenley was running 10 twos with 140 miles per hour terminals. The bike seeming to have the perfect balance of power for the York Strip. Talking of power, someone with an abundance of brake horsepower coming from his big block GSX was Tony Arnold, wheeling his way to a best of 10.33 at 140 miles per hour. Mentioned Taylor and most people think of Ken Taylor on his Turbo Suzuki. But this time, it's Keith Taylor on his immaculate GS750 making the news, with this incredible 9.98 second run at 136 miles per hour, going straight to the top of the leaderboard, a position he was to hold most of the day. Old campaigner Bill Hunter on his Spondon Turbo, with a 9.5 second run to his credit at Centipod earlier in the year, was having traction problems at York. In fact, the problem was so bad, Bill was struggling to reach the tens. Special builder extraordinaire Steve Burns was on his latest creation, a Spondon GSX R 1260, a machine definitely more suited to the Isle of Man than York Raceway. But Steve still managed a 10.49 second run at 140 miles per hour. Another special which had the cameras clicking was Tez Goodwin's Harris 900 Kawasaki. Immaculately prepared, but sadly not running as quickly as the Suzuki's. But then, what was? Upholding some Kawasaki honour, Richard Prosser on his GPZ 1260, sporting Trev's nitrous oxide injection, ran a best of 10.64 seconds at 129 miles per hour while hard-charging Edinburgh's very own Ron Russell, also running in the nitrous class, ran a best ever time of 10.37 seconds at 133 miles per hour. Could we see a nine second pass by the end of the series from this very streetable Suzuki? The two stroke boys were having a high old time at York. With the return of Rod Spry, we were to see a stroker in the tens again. But as ever, the Battle Royal was on again between Bill Calcutt and John Coon on their 750 kettles. On this occasion, John was the quicker with an 1152 at 121 miles per hour. But wait for it, Lum Goodall on his RD350 LC posted the quickest two-stroke time of the meeting. A run of 11.35 at 125 miles per hour. Look out, you turbo boys. York, as usual, offered the very best in crowd entertainment, with demonstration runs from b &M Racing, Team Suzuki's Phil Mellor on the Suzuki GB GSX-R 750, turning his hand to drag racing. And after getting used to the lights, he turned some credible low 11 second passes. Not bad for a road racer. We literally caught a glimpse of the LA hooker on one of its famous rolling burnouts, Chris Hansen showed off his new funny bike for the 1988 season. And just in case you hadn't heard, Gary Scholes and some colleagues from the West Yorkshire Police put in runs all day long to raise sponsorship money for the Great Ormond Street Hospital. And with donations and a raffle, raised in excess of £1,500 for the charity. Back with the ultimate street bike. And Keith Taylor's early lead was about to tumble as John Boy Messenger arrived on his awesome 1100E. John clung on and headed for a 9.97 second run 
at 144 miles per hour to give us the second nine second run of the weekend. On yet another low slung 1100E was Carl Hindel, chasing the leaders with his very creditable 10.44 at 133 miles per hour to give him 10th spot. With the top slots going to normally aspirated machines, the highest placed turbos were those of Ian Thomas on his black and gold Katana in 19th place with a 10.82 at 138 mile per hour run and Chris Easter on his Kawasaki Turbo, close behind in 20th place. Riding a Kawasaki Factory 750 Turbo, Trevor Sanders stormed to an 11.07 run at 128 miles per hour to secure 33rd place. With all these mentions of Suzuki's and Kawasaki's, let's not forget notable performances by Kevin Bannister on his FZR1000 Yamaha, and Michael Bloomer on a CB900 improving on last year's York times by a nearly a quarter of a second. In the four-stroke twin class, Bob Cornforth's Triton took top honours, while Howie on his XLH1000 Harley-Davidson broke the noise barrier. I said noise barrier, not sound barrier with this 14.61 second run at 88 mile per hour. The trendy dress award must go to David Dawson, on his RD250LC, sporting the latest in design and knitwear. Personally, I still prefer the Superbike t-shirts. Straight off the Yorkshire Moors, Bradley Davison and Tony Wright were putting their novelist to test on the Pallon Strip. Tony recorded a best of 14.25 at 88 miles per hour. And what ultimate street bike round would be complete without its wheelie? Mark Holroyd on his CBX 1000 Honda thrilled the crowd with some near vertical passes. The racing continued fast and furious until 3 p.m. when another first for York took place. A full 16 bike eliminator contest for the 16 fastest bikes of the day. Once again the turbos were not faring well against the normally aspirated bikes. After a hectic series of knockout races, Gary Kenley on his GSXR 1100 finally downed Graham Dance in a close fought race. Eliminator over, we were back with the ultimate street bike again. A late charge from Brian Emery on his 1100E saw him in third place with a run just outside the nines at 144 miles per hour. Definitely a machine to watch out for in future rounds. Good weather, good crowds, good racing. What more could we ask for for the first round of this year's Ultimate Street Bike? The result? John Messenger hanging on to his slender lead from second man Keith Taylor on his GS750. Third, Brian Emery on his abundantly powerful Suzuki. And fourth, Gary Kenley on his GSXR 1100 Suzuki. V&M Racing, Britain's most successful performance shop. Our results say it all. Jack Valentine, the European Pro Stock Champion in 1986 and 1987, and also British and Euro Series record holder over quarter and eighth mile. As well as preparing our own race machines to championship standard, V&M also have many successful customers, ranging from ultimate street bike competitors to the Heron Suzuki GB Road Race Team. All have relied on our high quality engine preparation for 1988. V&M Racing are also sole UK distributors for speed products and Eagle Exhaust Systems, the ultimate performance pipe. V&M Racing, the champion's choice. Contact us now on 0706 840066. Blyton, near Gainsborough in Lincolnshire, that's the venue for the second round of the Ultimate Street by Series. The all-new venue with a super grippy track and near Mediterranean conditions must be the ingredients for some very quick times. Keith Taylor, the ultra-quick Suzuki campaigner, was showing the same form as he had at York, straight into the nines with his GS750. Taylor number two was also here. Ken on his GSX1260 turbo Suzuki, powering away to a low 10 second pass. By the way, there were no terminal speeds recorded at Blyton. A shame, as I think we would have seen some 150 miles per hour passes. Lined up and ready to do battle, Chris Richards and Carl Hindle. On this occasion, Chris recorded a 10.23, and Carl on 
WZFE at 10.43. Drag racing at its very best. The next pair to run, the dynamic duo of John Boy Messenger and 1100E mounted Steve Burns, storm to nine second passes. Untouchable in the four-stroke twins class was Oji on his hardtail lowrider triumph, deafening a portion of the crowd with each of his 11 second passes. Coming closest to Oji was Jim Clayton on his yellow Ducati 750 SS. The only Duke I've seen with an extended swinging arm. Bob Cornforth on his Triton Special was out to improve his York winning time of 13.86 and did with this 13.51 second run at Blyton. However new a model the ZX10 Kawasaki may be, this one still found its way onto the strip. Now you've seen the belly pan of a Kawasaki, we might as well see the underneath of an FZR1000 Yamaha. But when it comes to wheelies, Mark Holroyd on the CBX Honda takes some beating. Here we go. No problems of front tyre wear on this one, eh? On yet another screaming six, Alan Sharp, by keeping his front wheel on the deck, managed a run of 11.89 seconds. In the two-stroke open class, while Bill Calfett's kettle was really on the boil with an 11.13 second run. But as usual, old rival John Coon wasn't far behind with an 11.25 second run on his fully fair GT750 Suzuki. At York, the two-stroke twin of Lum Goodall recorded a run of 11.35. But here at Blyton, Harry Barlow on his RD400 Yamaha posted a run of 11.18 seconds. Are we to see a stroker twin in the tens? Bill Hunter's run of bad luck was to continue here with a wrecked gearbox on his Spondon. And similar problems also for Carl Hindle on his EFE. Some riders were having better luck. Gary Kenley on his GSXR 1100 was in the nines, as was Brian Emery on his 1100E. And hard charging Ron Russell ran his best ever at Blyton. We asked Ron to tell us about the run. Right. Today at Blyton, I've run my fastest time ever. I squeezed in a 9.88 and um, it was backed up by a 9.99. The improvement in the, the performance, I think, has mainly come from uh, the good work by Steve at VNM, um, but I've also had a bit of extra from Trev's Nitrous. One of the most looked at bikes at the meeting was Andy Bacon's RD250 Yamaha, a quite unique looking machine and from his 10 runs up the Brighton Strip, consistently ran mid-12 seconds each time. Craig Ashton, running just outside the nines, did set one record on the day by running some 14 times up the strip. Pip Hyam, on Tony Middlehurst, Project Black Jet, ran a best of 10.04. The mighty V-Max Yamaha of Keith Houghton was sounding very healthy, but sadly the times were down on his York time of 11.74. A new name at the top, Martin Rawson, on his GSX-R 1100, was charging hard. With the Suzuki domination extending even further at Blyton, now the top 21 places were occupied by either a GSX or a GSX-R. The 16 bike elimination at Blyton was fast and furious, and after a couple of the fancy runners were knocked out, we were left with John Boy Messenger against Steve Burns and Ron Russell against Craig Ashton. Steve's burnout carried on to become the donut of the series, much to the crowd's approval.
catching him. In the other semi, Craig Ashton eliminated Ron Russell, who appeared to splatter at three-quarter distance. So, a messenger versus Ashton final. From the line, Craig whole shots John Boy, but John starts clawing back at the end. Close. In fact, so close, the flag judges at the finish line decided on a draw. By mutual consent, the race was rerun, and John made no mistake the second time. So once again, gorgeous weather has shone upon the ultimate street bike series. The results speak for themselves, with six riders running in the nines. Winner for a second time was John Messenger, second was Steve Burns, third was Gary Kenley, and fourth, Ron Russell on his nitrous-injected Suzuki. Every weekend throughout the country, hundreds of ACU-approved events are taking place. Competition enjoyed by novices and professionals of all ages. Clubs are running events over the dirt, round the circuits, or up the strip. You too can participate by joining an ACU-affiliated club. For further information, contact the Auto Cycle Union on Rugby 540-519. Although the straight road race in Cork is not an ultimate street bike round as such, there was a strong contingent of British street and competition bike runners who had sailed in on the Swansea to Cork ferry to add a somewhat international flavour to the proceedings. Cork is run by the aptly named Munster Motorcycle Club under a four-class system with smaller bikes in Class A, up to 750s in Class B, unlimited street stockers in Class C, and the rest, including competition bikes, in Class D. For a while, it was single lane racing, until our very own Tony Hutt managed to sort the lights out, and then two lane competition was resumed. Mel Nolan now takes over at trackside, or should I say, roadside. On the line of 377 riding a very big Suzuki Katana, Blessing Spares. Big Pascal, the man to go and see about motorcycle spares, large descriptions, spares, parts, second-hand parts, the big racing machines, that's Big Pascal, and the very, very big Suzuki Katana. 377 in the riverside lane. On the pit lane, there's number 3 on the board. Yeah. 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 As he crushes the finishing line. So, there we have number 377. It's Tony Murphy. Lucky Wilson with a very good takeoff indeed. This should be a quick time. Al Wilson, the big V4 Honda 1000cc. And he is crossing the finishing line in a time of 11, 12.03 seconds. There was Tom Collin on the 750cc Yamaha. The latest Genesis Yamaha, 750cc. He's away on the Genesis Yamaha, number 347, Jerry Conan. And over the standing start, quarter mile, Jerry has just broken the lights at 11.4. In the pit lane, we have number 376. Who's Paul Kelly from Sligo running a Honda CC? Very good start in the past. She has excellent on her Suzuki. Poking out about 125 brake horsepower. Barry Eastman's CBX funny bike was laid up in England with a knackered transmission. Meantime, Barry was making a manful job of hanging on to the new Phil Bland Nitrous Suzuki funny bike, which was obviously not at home on the cambered Corrig Rahan Strait. Another top funny bike competitor, Martin Peck, on the all-new Dymo sponsored funny, ran some shakedown passes which looked full of promise. Look out for this one in the future. Running strong all weekend was Owen Lewis on his nitrous-injected GSX 1100E. The Jersey man who makes a long journey to all the ultimate street bike rounds was rewarded with his first ever nine-second run at Cork. Fellow Jersey man Sid Norman on his CBR 1000 was not so lucky, going out in the quarterfinals of Class C, beaten by eventual finalist Pat Lynch on a local GSX-R 1100. 
although Pat lost in the final to last year's winner, road race expert Fran Morrison on a Kawasaki ZX-10. Stevie Burns, as he's called in court, won his final with some razor-sharp reflexes off the line and a time of 11.05. Not bad for an RG500 Gamma. John Goodman on the ex-Tony Huck Pro Stock Harris Kawasaki pulled the Falker to sink Graham Dance and take Class D honours in a time of 9.68. My God, this Goodman chap can ride bikes as well as take pictures. Some frantic activity in the last hour had ensured that the class elimination program was completed and there was even a new record established for the track. Alan Ward posted a scorching 9.39 second run to better Bill Hunter's 9.40 set last year. So the final outcome, class A winner Dave McCready, class B winner Steve Burns, class C Fran Morrison and class D John Goodman. Toaster Tuning Shop, the largest stockist of performance parts in the UK. World famous for their Formula One racing engines, Cosworth have chosen Toaster Tuning as their European distributor for Cosworth's prestigious motorcycle components. Together with vast stocks of American tuning goodies imported from Orient Express Racing of New York, Toaster Tuning are able to offer you the best in valve train components, including manly valves, Orient Express valve springs, mega cycle and commotion camshafts, also dyno ignition systems, coils and rev limiters, Wiseco street turbo drag race and road race pistons, Vance and Hines race exhaust, Makuni smoothbore and RS flat side carburetors, plus practically any other motorcycle performance product you could wish for. Toaster tuning staff can advise and build these components into your engine, set up on their Superflow dyno for the best performance at the most competitive rates. Tuning is an expensive game. Consult the experts now on 0933 77465. Across the water again, this time to the Isle of Man for round three of this year's Ultimate Street Bike Series. Glorious weather, large crowds, and with the famous 8th Mile Morag Prom closed to the public, the action could commence. Chris Richards, an open class runner, was straight into the sixes with his V&M prepared GSX 1100, seemingly unaffected by a stiff breeze sweeping across the track from the sea. Also charged up for the eighth mile dash was Owen Lewis on his nitrous injected 1100E. Having ridden all the way from Jersey, he ran 6.54 at 116 miles per hour to claim a top spot. Richard Albums of Toaster Tuning Shop on his 1500cc Cosworth Suzuki managed to run a total of 10 times down the Ramsey Strip. Equaling Richard Albums with 10 passes was Ian Armstrong riding a GSXR 1100. Unfortunately, he didn't break into the six second bracket. She, yes, she, being Cat Burrows, riding a Suzuki 1238 to some very respectable passes, was receiving just a little coaching from Mick Senior. Quickest four-stroke twin was Pat Sefton's GPZ 500 Kawasaki, until this incident happened. Debbie Wiggins slightly modifying the bike's bodywork. Thankfully, Debbie was unhurt. Debbie's boyfriend, wheelchair-bound Neil Champion, wasn't quite so lucky. His mad Sunday excursion on his Harris 750 Turbo ended up with him not remembering a lot about it. But being a keen ultimate street bike racer, he set off down the track but pulled up with handling problems. Trouble is, you get spot with these Harris chassis. Craig Ashton's GSXR 1100 was up with the leaders today. The next day, the very same bike was entered in the senior TT. GSXR versatility. Who's this? Oh, it's Tony Middlehurst on the new Project Black Jet. Getting used to the turbo power is going to take a bit of time. Also new to turbos this year, Chris Easter was starting to get the hang of it with a run of 6.88 at 116 miles per hour to give him a top 10 place.
Class B winner at Cork, Dave McCready, continued his winning streak, taking the two-stroke twin honours at Ramsey on his consistently quick RD350. He pipped Alan Tinian on his two-stroke open class RD500. A bike getting a lot of attention was John Scott's immaculate H1 triple Kawasaki, looking better than the day it rolled out of the showroom. Radical Motorcycles is how I would describe the Quantum Suzuki's with on-board Grant Leonard and Stephen Dyer. Marco Rosso was charging hard as ever on his GSX 1100 and running a best of 702 at 106 miles per hour. Another regular Ultimate Street Bike competitor on his immaculate Katana is Jerry Phil, here running a 6.84, but later went on to improve his time to 6.71 at 114 miles per hour. Royston Underhill on his FZR1000 was the quickest Yamaha, here running another silky smooth low seven second pass. Bill Hunter's Spondon Turbo, looking every bit of winner, was still being hampered by gear change problems. No gear change problems for Kevin Hodgson. His problem was keeping the front end in contact with the road. Ian Cloak on his Ducati 900 and Jeff Sweet on his Ducati 900 SSD both ran times in the 8.6 second bracket in the four-stroke twin battle. V-twin to V4, the Honda of David Bruin ran a best time of 7.58 seconds. Certainly no cam problems on this one, yet. Andy Bacon's usual unusual two-stroke twin had given way to an FZ750 Yamaha for the Ramsey event. Staying with 750ccs, this time in the shape of a GSXR 750 Suzuki, Mr. Lewenden recording a staggering 6.89 second run. Oh, and this is Tucker, as he's known, on his ZX10 Kawasaki. Silly Tucker, if you ask me. If I'm not mistaken, that looks like an Isle of Man logo on his back. Must be a local, I think. Anyway, his name is Pete Jones, and his open class GS1000 ran a best of 7.32. The pace was furious, and by the end of the day, with no eliminations at Ramsey because of single lane running, Chris Richards just hung on to his first place by four hundredths of a second from Owen Lewis. Third, Craig Ashton, and fourth, Andy Tyskovich on another 1100 EF. Plenty for the crowds, with riders fast and slow, Tony Huck had organised another memorable Isle of Man ultimate street bike. EBC's 323 and Goldline compound disc pads are the professional's choice, a fact endorsed by both Steve Burns and Bill Hunter in the Ultimate Street Bike series. When it comes to stopping, choose EBC. EBC pads are available from any good dealer throughout the country. For round four of the Ultimate Street Bike series, long masting near Stratford to be precise, and the weather, well, nothing short of brilliant. Britain's second day of summer. The first was at Blyton, of course. Some 299 riders took to the strip, and during the course of the weekend clocked up an astounding 2,300 runs. The most stunning new bike to be tried at Marston was Tony Arnold's Cosworth Katana. Performing as well as it looked, Tony ran consistent 9.7's first time out. If that didn't stun you enough, then this will. Brian Emery on his 1100E with every modification you ever dreamt of ran this monster pass of 9.66 seconds at an amazing 155 miles per hour terminal. Chris Easter was getting quicker by the round. Question is, would he hit nines by the end of the day? This time out, 10.02 at 143 miles per hour so near. Gary Kenley, although quick, was off his usual pace after changing a swinging arm before coming to Long Marston. 10.11 at 138 on this occasion. John McKean's supercharged Suzuki was about to enter the top 10 with a first nine second run for him.
Competitor 513, Chris Hall, was running consistent nines now, after last year's gearbox problems. After selling his GSX-R1100, Andy Brewster purchased this tasty looking beast from NCK Racing at Coventry. Problem was, it had so much power, it ate Metzler road tyres for lunch. So Andy swapped to a competition slick in the afternoon and ran demos. Later on, the bike was to pitch him off at the top end of the strip. Other demo passes came from Rod Pallant on LA Hooker, ear-splitting stuff, that one, and Paul Willis on the NCK Funny Bike, normally aspirated and producing a low five-second pass over the eighth mile. In the two-stroke open class, Rod Spry took the honours once more, closely followed by the crackling kettles of Wayne Schreier and Wild Bill Calcutt. In the four-stroke twin battle, Graham Wolf again took honours on his Formula One Ducati. Harry, Inspector Barlow as his name, took his pro porting RD400 to victory again and surprising a few big fours with his rapid departure from the line. Losing a race, you can get over that. But lose what you're sitting on, like Pete Jones nearly did at Marston, well, that's different. Dave Ennis, on his Z1B, nearly made his first outing of the year at Longmaston. Meanwhile, Pete Sherman, on a GS1000, found himself with a time ticket which read 10.9 at 123 miles per hour. And what was this? John Goodman not being able to turn down a go on his old bike? Oh, and another familiar figure, Tony Middlehurst on Project Black Jet, popping and banging his way to a 10.73 at 138 miles per hour. Stephen Ashby on a GS1000 Suzuki was pouring the air en route to a mid-11 second pass. From the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of this monster wheelie taking place. Bill Hunter, starring in a tale of two bikes, first out on his 1100E, then back to the Spondon Turbo for a 10-second eliminator qualifying run. Local man Wayne Schreier, this time on his Kawasaki 1100, qualified in bump spot with a 10.15 at 137 miles per hour. How long will it be before the 16 bike eliminator is run with 16 bikes qualifying in the nines? Talking of eliminators, for the series of close run battles, Martin Peck on the nitrous injected Dymo GSX 1150 was left to do battle with Steve Burns on his turbocharged E. What better an end to a nail-biting final than a nine-second result? Steve Burns taking the win from Martin Peck. With just time for a last spectacular demo from Phil Bland on his normally aspirated funny bike. The final outcome was Brian Emery clinging to first place with his 9.66. Second was Tony Arnold. Third, Steve Burns and fourth Chris Hall with his nitrous injected ZX1100. High Power, the number one nitrous oxide system in the UK. This highly flexible, highly reliable system has brought excellent results in the Ultimate Street Bike Series in 1988. Top nitrous competitor at York, Brian Emery, on his GSX 1100E, also achieved a 9.61 second run at Santa Pod to tie for the first place. In the finals at Long Marston, Brian again emerged as the top nitrous competitor. Other high power runners include Ron Russell, who ran straight into the nines for the first time at Brighton, and Owen Lewis, runner up in the Isle of Man. He also ran nines in Ireland. High power kits are the most popular nitrous injection systems available, outnumbering other systems by nearly two to one. Make your 1989 season take off with a high power nitrous oxide system. Call Trev on Doncaster 834 343. Saturday, July the 16th, and the Ultimate Street Bike Series enters round five at Santa Pod Raceway, Bedfordshire. Conditions were far from perfect, but still over 250 bikes had been scrutineered, and the challenge was on to find the quickest over the pod sort of a mile. With Suzuki's domination so far, 
it was good to see Chris Easter getting everything together and running a string of nine second passes through the weekend. Supporting him on yet another Kawasaki was Chris Hall. His ZX 1100, slightly larger in CC, running nitrous injection, but he was able to post a best of 9.81 seconds at 148 miles per hour. The Dino twins, Bill Hunter and Martin Peck, both ran nines on a strip that wasn't helping any of the big horsepower runners in their efforts to run quickly. One man trying to run quickly but ending up with a wrecked gearbox for his trouble was Ken Taylor on his GSX 1260. Also to end up in the back of the van, sadly, was John McKean Suzuki, his supercharger giving its last blow of the day. A brief interlude from bikes to bring you the hottest thing on four wheels. This time out was purely a shakedown pass, or, to put it in simple terms, running in. A Sierra to watch out for away from the traffic lights. Then yet another first for the ultimate street bike, and indeed drag racing. Steve Burns on his Turbo 1100E was going to relay our first on-board camera pictures. So here we go, with the sensation of riding a quarter of a mile in under 10 seconds with speed at the controls. All of Steve's other passes went as smoothly. This run, Steve allowed the opposition to disappear, then setting off in a hard pursuit went a little too hard and almost ended up on his back. When the camera was transferred to John Boy Messenger's 1100E road bike, I stress road bike, he set out to improve on Steve's wheels, risking a lane swap, a tangle with the Armco barrier, but all was in vain. For John had accidentally switched off the recorder when he started the wheelie. The latest 1100E to chase a nine second pass was that of Andy Tyskovich. Charging strongly, his best pass was a 1037 at 130 miles per hour. Harry Barlow was again looking like the man to catch in the two stroke twin category with consistent low 11 second passes. What he going to be called? Gary Overland on his GSXR 1100 was running consistently with a string of 11.2 second runs. Running as consistently as Gary, but nearly a whole second quicker, was Dean Williamson on his GSXR 1100, sounding very crisp over the quarter. Completing a hat trick of the same sort of bike was Brian Allen Ross on his standard model, running just outside the 10 second bracket. Crowd entertainment at its slowest were these two on their C70s. By half distance, the cameraman and half the crowd were asleep. Awakened by the next pairing of Chris Ensor and Ron Russell, the crowd saw both dip near the nine second bracket in a close run race. A welcome return for Dave Ennis on his Z1B Kawasaki after his long Marston accident. But despite the setback, Dave ran straight into the tens. Katana mounted Stephen Sykes ran well during the weekend, his best run a 10.69 at 127 miles per hour. With turbochargers on their katanas, Ian Toms ran a best of 10.11 at 143, and Mick Noble on his 1168 version ran a string of low 10 second passes, the best being this one at 1027 at 135 miles per hour. Fastest man for most of Saturday with this run against Steve Burns was Chris Easter. We caught up with Chris and asked what makes last year's 11 second machines this year's 9 second machines. For this year, I wanted to put a Kawasaki up among the Suzuki's, try and break the Suzuki's stranglehold, so went across to NCK Racing and uh, had the uh, bike board out to 1260cc's, had the uh, Mr. Turbo Turbo kit bolted on and a single stage nitrous oxide injection kit. Um, it all seems to be working well now and um, I'm pretty pleased with it, it's not done so bad. 
Jimmy Dunn on an ESD Suzuki Turbo was showing old form again with this charge dipping into the tens. Unfortunately, there was no terminal speed for this one, but Jimmy was flying. Mark Smythe on a GSX 1135EF covered the Santa Pod strip a staggering 22 times, doing his bit to boost the run total for the weekend to 2,900 runs. From this total, nine riders made runs in the nines. We spoke to three of them and asked them what makes a nine-second machine. Chris Hall. Last year I had the engine really well sorted out. It was making an awfully large amount of horsepower, but I just couldn't break into the nines at all. The only thing I was breaking was gearboxes. However, this year I've got a super strong, super secret American gearbox, which has really solved my problems. It's running nines easily now. Owen Lewis. Right, uh, first of all, I think I'd like to apologise for the state of the bike. Um, it's a bit of a mess, but it, it does get ridden to all the meetings. This year I've done all the rounds so far, including the, the trip over to Ireland at the Isle of Man. At a great time in Ireland, the strip was really grippy. I managed to pull two 9.8 uh, 9 and a 9.9. Um, unfortunately, I haven't even matched those times in England yet, yet this year. I've managed a 10-0 at Long Marsden. Um, I'd like to thank Dave and Clyde from Motorama back home in Jersey, who sponsor me, and also Victor at TTS, who built the motor in the first place. Um, all in all, I'm having a really good time this season, and I'm enjoying myself. Tony Arnold. The winter of uh, this year, after struggling with the power back end of the year, of last year, we uh, decided with Richard Albans at TTS that we'd build this, and he helped me a lot with the setting up of it. Uh, basically, for drag racing and the ultimate street bike, you need a chassis that's long and low to get the best out of your engines. And if you have a good chassis, you can do away with a lot of ex excess power that a lot of the turbos have, because you're basically through a road tyre, you can't use it. Um, what we've used is a, long, a longer, lower Katana chassis, uh, wider rear wheel, and um, basically got it as long and as low as, as practical with the street tyre. And first time out at Stratford, uh, Long Marsden, we were consistent 9.7s, which, to be honest, it's, it's chuffed me to bits. And uh, it's proved that you can do it on a really low budget as well, as long as you get good sound advice to start off with. In the four-stroke twins, Graham Wolf's Formula One Ducati just took the honours from Oggy's Triumph and Gene Clayton's yellow 750 SS2. Time for just a couple more passes, then it's eliminator time. With the bump spot number 16 being an incredible 10.31, the action was going to be fast, with John Messenger and Chris Easter among the top stars out in the preliminaries. First quarter final saw Steve Burns against Chris Hall. Steve chose the right hand lane and led from the lights. In the second quarter final, Martin Peck, again in the right hand lane, got the drop and made the running from Brian Emery. Next pairing were Chris Richards and Tony Arnold. From the left hand lane, this time Tony Arnold stormed to the lowest ET of the weekend, 9.61 at 145 miles per hour. And finally, Bill Hunter and Tracy Martin. With Bill staging late, Tracy went to get the jump and red lit. In the semis, Martin Peck chose right hand lane and ran brilliantly to beat Steve Burns to the line. In the second semi, Bill Hunter again stage late, Tony Arnold red lighting this time, so the final was to be Martin Peck and Bill Hunter. And both from the Dymo stables, will we see Russ Denton service both lanes? Having got to the final, Bill Hunter made no mistakes and with a 9.67 pass, took the win.
With a late run, Brian Emery equaled Tony Arnold's earlier run of 9.61 to tie for first place. Third was Steve Burns, and fourth on his Kawasaki, Chris Easton. NCK Racing. With our engineering expertise, we can help you set records as we have for the top stars in 1988. Chris Easter on his NCK prepared 1260 Kawasaki has now become a force to be reckoned with in the ultimate street bike series. John Messenger on a 1385 NCK prepared Suzuki, sporting a pro street motor. No turbo, no nitros, John has just clinched the BDRA championship. Graham Nash, on his latest funny bike, now holds the European quarter and eighth mile record. At Longmaston, he also ran the first four second eighth mile outside the States. NCK Racing are also distributors for Wiseco Pistons, Mr. Turbo and Kent Cams, the all British camshaft. NCK are the experts and using their Superflow Dyno can help you win in 1989. Call us now on Coventry 36 23 34. For the ultimate street bike finals we were back at Long Marston Raceway, this time as part of a full motorcycle drag race meeting. Saturday gave a chance for ultimate street bike runners to qualify for one of the top 16 places in the final. two-stroke and four-stroke twin categories. In an effort to beat the threatening bad weather, Saturday's qualifiers started briskly with a pro-stop category. Some rapid passes over the eighth mile from John Goodman on his Harris Kawasaki. Also in the fires was John Morton on the TNT IPEX-sponsored Angry Bumblebee Kawasaki. With the name White Lightning, we see where Len Paget gets his nickname from, with the super quick launches, the all-white machine streaks away from the line. Third place qualifier, Cole Rawl, now running under the multi-part team banner, alongside funny bike rider Chris Hampson. Cole himself used to be a top rider in the Ultimate Street Bike Series. The country's top drag race builder, John Cliff, was second place qualifier with this pass registering 5.5. But just pipping John for number one slot was Jack Valentine from VM Racing in Rochdale. The crowd were already talking of the possible Clift Valentine showdown the next day. An equally close battle was taking place in the Super Street class. Many of the entrants for this class were also running quarter miles in the ultimate street bike event. John Bent was going faster than ever, with a nine second pass in the first round. Top fuelers these days are a rare, beautiful sight, but are now being challenged for class supremacy by the long, low, funny bikes who are every bit as quick, but not quite as noisy. Rod Pallant on the LA Hooker was outpaced on this occasion by an on-form Phil Brackvogel on his Dymo sponsored Fueler, who ran the first ever four-second time for the eighth mile. But then out came Graham Nash on his state-of-the-art funny bike, bristling with features only normally seen on the other side of the Atlantic. This run was to set a new track record of 4.88 seconds. On the other NCK-sponsored funny bike, Paul Willis was having problems, coasting through the eighth mile. Let's hope a solution can be found to his problems to bring him back into competition the next day. Now to the ultimate street bike itself, where qualifying was just as close. Ron Russell, running sixes in Super Street, was now running nines in Ultimate Street. Brian Emery, after an early gearbox problem, with a 9.4 second pass at almost 155 miles per hour. We said this machine had potential. John Boy was also in the nines before a valve problem on his normally super reliable 1100E gave him an overnight trip to NCK Racing Coventry. Many riders were running low tens in an effort to qualify for the finals the next day. Among them, Graham Bolchin. Thomas on his katana should have had a new swinging arm for the final, 
but had to make do with the old one. David Miller on his GSXR 1100 was up with the pace and looked like qualifying for the final. In the four-stroke twins, Graham Wolfe on his Ducati and Jim Clayton on a Ducati 750 SS were running fastest in this class after Oji broke a crank on the Triumph. In the two-stroke open class, Bill Cowcutt ran his first ever 10-second pass. We caught up with him in the pits and asked him his views on the ultimate street bike and its costs to compete. Well, uh, I know that uh, ultimate street bike is associated with high high spend and you buy your performance, especially in the uh, in the four-stroke classes, but that isn't necessarily so in the two-stroke class. Um, basically what you need is the is the knowledge to tune the bike uh, more than the money to, to buy the expensive pieces, as happens in the four-stroke class. Sunday came with the weather no better and time short for those who hadn't already qualified. Andy Seagust on his nitrous injected GSXR 1100 was running strongly, as was Richard Prosser, also aided by nitrous, running low tens, even with a slow launch from the line. Two-stroke open class went something like this. Bill Calcutt losing to Wayne Schreier in the semis. The other semi saw Dave Alloway on his RG500 Gamma with a bye run to the final. Waiting for him was Wayne Schreier, but Dave Alloway held on to his good start and won with an 11.30 at 119 miles per hour. Two-stroke twins, it was Harry Barlow, the fancied winner, against Lum Goodall on his Yamaha. But Lum Goodall took the win with a 12.19 at 110 miles per hour. Now for that clash of the giants in pro stock. The predicted Valentine versus Cliff final was now a reality. Off the line, Cliff was straight as a die. Jack Valentine trailed after getting out of shape. The other epic final on which the Funny Bike Championship rested was between Graham Nash and Chris Hampson, who had led the championship from early in the year. Graham needed the win to pinch the title at the post, and that's precisely what he did. Back to ultimate street bike final action. Bill Hunter, who went out in the quarterfinals with a controversial staging decision, was out to prove a point. His run, smooth, quick, in fact the quickest ultimate street bike time ever, 9.37 at 154 miles per hour. Through to the semis were Chris Easter, after eliminating Brian Emery in his quarterfinal round, Steve Burns was also through with a win over Tony Arnold in his quarterfinal. The other two semi-finalists winning their way through were Ron Russell and John Boy Messenger. The outcome, Steve's super start with a front wheel aloft and rear tyre spinning, saw him to victory with a 9.52. The next semi-final saw John Boy and Ron Russell. Both hard chargers, both getting away from the line together, but John's extra power seeing him to the line first in 9.54 at 146 miles per hour. The final of Ultimate Street Bike. Steve Burns against last year's winner, John Boy Messenger. Drama on the line as John Boy loses fire allowing Steve to power away to a solo 9.60 at 150 miles per hour. Here with his comments on the complete season is the editor of Superbike magazine, Tony Middlehurst. Oh, in true uh, Ultimate Street Bike style, the best racing of the year came in the final. 
with uh, two men dipping below the magic 9.5 second mark. Um, in fact, Bill Hunter's time of 9.37 uh, proved to be the best performance ever on a street tyre and uh, fittingly enough the tyres were supplied by one of the event's sponsors, uh, Metzler. So that's, that's brilliant and well done to Bill. Um, there will be a few rule changes for next year but uh, the essence of the competition will remain unchanged and there will be no let up in the chase to become Britain's ultimate street bike of 1989.